Sure. So last week we had a pullback in the price of oil, and that was really just a realignment of what the physical market has been telling us for two or three months. So we've seen the Brent structure in Contango for two or three months, yet oil prices have been stubbornly high. What we had last week was a pullback, and a lot of people are affiliating this with a um, strengthening of the dollar. And whilst that is a um, certainly a factor, um, what we also need to consider is the fundamental and the structural um, trend of weaker oil demand and higher supplies. And last week was just a correction um, to bring uh, oil prices or the flat price in Brent in line with the Brent structure. Sure. Well, many would argue that um, oil prices or lower oil prices will stimulate demand. Um, but what's going on, certainly on the demand side of the equation, is a realignment. And this is happening mostly in non-OECD and in Asia, where um, a number of countries are taking measures to try and bring uh, or shift in investment-driven growth into consumer-led growth. And this is, I'm talking about the collective economies of the likes of Indonesia, um, Thailand, Hong Kong, all of these regions are key importing countries. And what this is doing is causing a slowdown in demand in the near term. And then coupled to this, we've got the bigger macro players like China, where we're also seeing signs of slowing. Sure. So if we look at what inventories have done over the course of the last six or seven months, we've seen builds. Um, we're in peak refinery turnaround season at the moment. So September and October saw um, around six to six and a half million barrels per day of refining capacity offline. So seasonally demand has come off. So it's likely to remain weak for a while. But um, out into the longer term, so certainly for Q4 and the first half of 2015, we're going to need to see a running down of inventories which have built for six of the past seven months and a pickup in end user demand critically from the smaller countries um, such as Indonesia, Thailand, non-OECD, Asia, which has propped up global oil balances over the past 18 months, even when China has seen signs of slowing.